Welcome to Unit 2, Lab 4, Dealing with Complexity. Here on page 1, we're going to write some code to get a robot to go through several mazes. Our goal in this lab is to write elegant and efficient code. In the first example, we're shown a solution for maze 1 that works, but can be written in a better manner. You can see that the first one has moved forward in a repeat 7 loop twice, and if you look carefully, you can identify a pattern. And this concept of pattern recognition falls under the computer science concept known as abstraction. The way I think about it is like this. If I find that my scripts or algorithms include multiple copies of the same code, there's probably a better, more efficient way to write it. Programmers refer to this as the dry principle, or don't repeat yourself. In the elegant solution shown, they've nested a repeat block inside of another repeat block. And nesting just means putting one block inside of another. Move forward is repeated seven times, then there's one rotate right, and then everything is done once more because all of it is inside of a repeat two block. And since you're most likely pretty new to coding, don't be so hard on yourself if you're unable to immediately come up with efficient solutions like this. Do it the brute force way first, or whichever way makes sense to you, but then when you do get your code working, try thinking of ways that you can refactor it or rewrite it into a more concise solution. Just getting your code to work is great, but going back and making it efficient but still readable will get you to pro status. So in number one, we're told to examine the robot and the board sprites. In board, they have a whole bunch of mazes. So when I click on board, we can see that when I click on the green flag, it draws maze one. If I click on draw maze two, draw maze three, we have all these different mazes that we're gonna have to create code to solve. So I'm gonna go back to maze one, and in our robot, we're going to put escape maze right over here when we're ready to, to run whatever we create. We've already been given the answer to the first one, so I recommend you do rewrite it and like drag in the blocks and remake it. And just remember that if you do face any issues, you can rewatch my three tips for debugging video and figure out a couple of ways that you can kind of see what Snap is doing, either by enabling visible stepping or throwing in a save block here and there so that you can see where the computer actually is as it's going through the code. All right, let's get to work on a solution for maze two. So I'm going to remove escape maze one, and I'm gonna drag in escape maze two, and this will run when I hit the space key. That's the event that it's listening for. And for board, I'm gonna draw maze two when I click on the green flag. So I have my setup ready. When I click the green flag, it draws the maze, but if I click space key right now, it's not gonna do anything because if I check out my code, my block editor, it shows that maze 2 is empty. There's no solution for maze 2 just yet. So let's see, how do we solve maze 2? First thing we got to do is turn this sprite, rotate it to the left. Then we have to move forward one block. Then we have to rotate it to the right. And then we have to move forward one block. Now we're here. And then we have to do the same thing over again. We have to rotate left, move forward, rotate right, move forward, and let's see how many times we have to do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I could go ahead and duplicate all of this seven times and keep rewriting it, but you guys can see there's a lot of repetition. And if you see repetition or you see patterns like this, you should start thinking of ways that you can make this a little bit more efficient. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna try it out. So instead of doing that, I'm going to bring in a repeat block, and I'm going to try this seven times. So let's throw this in there, and when I hit apply and then hit the space key, it's going to run through my code, and it should work. Perfect. I can't think of any more efficient way to do this. I think that's as clean as we can get. So let's go on to maze three. So let me just drag escape maze two out of there. Escape maze three is now in the space key, and the board I have to change it to draw maze three. So now I can click on the green flag and everything will be set. I gotta go back to robot and I'm gonna edit my maze three block. Let's open up the block editor, make it a little bit bigger, and let's see how we can do this. First thing we gotta do is turn left. We gotta rotate left. Then we have to move forward one, two, three times. One, two, three times. So already I could start seeing that, hey, if I'm going to move forward three times, I might as well just repeat it. 
but let's just keep going and do it the more inefficient way. So after I've moved forward three times, then I can rotate right. And then I'm going to move forward three more times. And I'll be up here. And then I can rotate left. Let me actually duplicate this entire thing and see if this will work. I'm going to rotate left. And if I move forward, one, two, three, four. Oh, we have to move forward four times now. So it's not three anymore. Now we have to move forward four times. Then we can rotate right. And then we can move forward one, two, three, four times. So look at that. If we put all of this together, this should work. Let me just expand it a little bit so you guys can see it. Let me hit apply. And when I hit the space bar, it should work. Perfect. Except it's really inefficient. Let's see if we can find a better way to do this. Let me go over to my control block and start dragging in some repeats because there's definitely a lot of repetition here. So what I'm noticing is that I repeat move forward three times a couple of times myself. So let me just do this. So I repeat this three times. So I don't have to put it three times. Otherwise, that's like nine. I can pull this out and I just repeat move forward three times. So there we go. I haven't changed the code that much, but already it's a little bit more efficient. Okay. Now down here, I have to repeat move forward four times. So repeat move forward four times. And I have to do that twice. So here we go. I just made a copy of it. I just duplicated it. And let me remove these move forwards and replace them with a repeat block. So move left, move, then move forward, then move right, or rotate right, then move forward. And that should be the exact same thing, or it should work exactly the same way as before. Let me just hit my green flag and test it out. And that's wonderful. It works. But I think we can do better because I still see some repetition here. We're rotating left and then repeating move forward, rotating right, then moving forward, rotating left, moving forward, then rotating right, moving forward. So there's still some repetition, but the problem is that we start by repeating three times. And I don't know how we can start a block at repeat three. Oh, wait, I can think of something. Why don't we use a script variable? Why don't we use a script variable to keep track of how many times we should repeat? So I'm just going to call this variable times to repeat. That's a pretty uh, self-explanatory name. I am going to set it equal to three in the beginning. So times to repeat is going to be three first. And we're going to replace repeat three with times to repeat. I'm going to put my script variable all the way at the top. So now this code will work exactly as before, but I can do better. I can actually pull off this rotate left. You guys can kind of see that it looks almost the same. The only difference is that times to repeat has increased by one in the one on the right that goes underneath. So all I really need to do is repeat everything here twice. And in between, in between the repetitions, I have to increase my times to repeat by one. So I'm going to put a change times to repeat by one in between the repeat two. So if you're having a little bit of trouble visualizing this or thinking about how this is running, go through it line by line or throw in a say block. So if you throw in a say block down here, you'll be able to see that after it does all of this, once the block is right here, or the sprite is right here, it's going to say hello for two seconds, and then it's going to change times to repeat by one, and now it's going to do it four times. So this is exactly the same code that we had before, but it's a little bit more efficient. Now, I can think of another way I can do the same exact thing. Instead of using a script variable, I can use a for block. Do we have that available immediately? Yeah, we do. It's at the bottom of the control palette. So I can use a for loop and instead of starting at one, I'll start it at three and I'll go up to four. And what I'm going to do is repeat everything in here. Let me just repeat this. Um, I'm not going to need times to repeat. I'm not going to need the hello. But what I can do is I can replace it with this I. This I variable will do the exact same thing as this one on the left. 
and you can see it's written in much less lines. I'm actually going to remove the say block because we don't need that. I was just trying to show you guys if you need to debug what you could do. And we've made this even more efficient. I think this should work also. If I doesn't make sense for you as like a temporary variable, you can name it um, repeats or times to repeat. And then just make sure that you uh, replace wherever you use that variable with repeats. Although I don't know if that's the best name because now it says repeat repeats times. Um, but you guys can change that. I'm going to hit apply. Actually, before I hit apply, I got to drag this one off. And then I'm going to drag the four block in here. I'm going to hit apply and hit the green flag. And when I hit the space bar, it should work. Great. I can't think of any other way to do this. So I am going to move on to maze four.